If you attended elementary school before 1995, you probably learned that our solar system has two main parts. The inner solar system, consisting of the rocky planets Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, and the outer solar system, containing the gas giants Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. But scientists didn't really know what to make of Pluto, the tiny planet clinging to the outer edge of the solar system all by itself in a highly tilted, much elongated orbit. Is Pluto a misfit? Is it just this weird, lone object out there? And maybe there's, it's just a, an oddball. Today, that geography has changed. The gas giants actually occupy the middle region of the solar system. The outer solar system is inhabited by hundreds of thousands of small, icy objects that make up a region called the Edgeworth Kuiper Belt. Even further beyond that, a region known as the Oort Cloud. When it was realized by the late 90s and the early 2000s that not just was this a new zone, a new geography for the solar system that we'd not been able to see before, but that it was littered with small planets that we didn't even expect the solar system made, suddenly Pluto fell into context. Pluto, far from being a loner, is actually a member of one of the biggest families of objects in the solar system. Pluto was discovered in 1930. Its largest moon, Charon, was discovered in 1978. And while the existence of the Kuiper Belt was predicted in the 1940s and 50s, finding these objects proved nearly impossible for most of the 20th century. Most of the objects are less than 60 miles wide and lie more than 3 billion miles from Earth. But it took until the 90s for the technology to improve. And the tech, two technologies were CCD cameras that could go much fainter and computers that could actually sift through all the data. So the first real cohort to Pluto, a much smaller object called 1992QB1 was found that year, 1992. Within another year, four more were found. The year after that, 10 were found. Now we have 1,500. Most of them are tiny. They are the size of counties or New England states. A few are large, not as big as Pluto, not thousands of kilometers across. A couple are like Pluto, but many are big enough to be rounded by self-gravity. With the discovery of these new objects, scientists had a new reason to want to send a probe to Pluto. Several mission proposals failed to come to fruition, but in 2001, NASA selected the New Horizons mission to do a flyby study of Pluto. And we launched it in 06, and now we're almost there. After New Horizons' close encounter on July 14, 2015, mission planners may choose another target in the Kuiper Belt. Scientists think this strange outer realm could provide totally new information about the history of our solar system. Now, you look at the asteroid belt, or the terrestrial planets, or the giant planets, they've all evolved and changed over time by interacting with each other or you're just changing over time. The objects in the outer solar system have not. And so th this is our best opportunity to kind of look back in time to see what was going on in the early solar system. We've never been to an ice dwarf. We've never been to a planet in the Kuiper Belt. The dwarf planets dominate the population of the solar system. Who knows what they're like? We're going exploring. Space.com.